risk of rain time. Something a little bit more laid backer. At least ramping up slowly so I can warm up and not just get pounded into the ground repeatedly. It's always nice. I don't really like to use this dude much, so I'll try it out. I've been like trying to like mentally heal myself. It's like I believe it's pretty possible since the mind and body are super connected. At least to some pretty decent degree. So and there's like I've gotta like work. So to talk really 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 giving it my all for capitalism right now it's been working pretty good you know, I was in like a ton of pain last night and now I'm perfectly okay it's pretty sick finally get paid. I'd like mad like mad beef with my my corporation slave owners because you know, they were telling me I was gonna get paid like two weeks ago and I did not get paid. And you know I don't mind waiting but I hate disappointment. I hate when people are transparent. It breaks my brain. And my brain just like goes into like full like, I don't trust any humans, I'm ready to fight all of you mode. So I just need like clarity and transparency to like stay out of that mode. Secondly, I know I can't trust the people around me, is it like kind of fly off the walls? Like I let it go after a while, but I was really mad because you know, I was very excited to to like At this point in time, there isn't really anything going for me, besides like having a job and like being really good at almost every single thing I do and being like really attractive and fit. That's like, you know, pretty vain and boring. And I'm still looking for external things to fill the like, infinitely empty void inside myself. It really is going for me is my ability to like fill the void on my own. I don't necessarily need other things all the time. But sometimes I get caught up in wanting things and wanting external things to you know, something tangible to like exist. It feels good to like be part of the earth, be a human, and I've had to like continually destroy all of the like, play and work to survive. And it's like things have just been bad. So you know I don't like usually want things. I don't let myself want things. I don't let myself look forward to anything. I don't let myself expect anything. I assume I'm going to die within the next two days constantly. Just cause that will keep me from suffering too much or getting too caught up in my intrusive thought loops. So long as I remember how like 
did we learn it? everything is and how I have no control whatsoever, then I can stay out of self-destruction mostly. And I stay in more of a phase of just anxious fear in the present. Which is way better than like the self-destruction, obsessive compulsive thought trains that I usually have. It's not even a contest. So I chose to continually experience my death and rebirth over and over again. Every single time I got caught up in a, a bad thought loop. I just instantly throw myself into a place where my ego was decimated and there was nothing to do but sit, shut up, and breathe. So long as that pressure is on, then everything's good. And I find peace usually there, and I feel super comfortable in the present moment. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with existence, you know. The alternative is not existing. And so, it's like, ugh, oh, it's a no-brainer. Let me just exist for however long I'm here and make the most of it. But when I do that, it kind of loses a little bit of my humanity. You know, I don't really have any ability to relate to anybody. It's like, what all I think about is how, like... What do I even think about in those moments? It's a good question. I don't really think all that much at all, really. So my head's really empty, and... I only, like, come out of it if there's, like, some sort of external stimuli. And there's no external stimuli anymore. Cause I don't like talk to my friends much. Um, don't have friends that are like even remotely on the same level of consciousness I am. So it's painful talking to them because they just like try and drag me down sometimes. I have a really good friend. His name is Daniel. He's he's chill. But he's also still, like, very far away from my own space. And sometimes it's just nice to, like, be understood to any degree at all. Instead of just, like, having people tune out whenever they stop understanding you. Like, even have people care enough to, like, try and understand you or, like, not pretend that they do when they don't. Which is also cool, but, you know, everyone's got their big old fragile egos. They're so afraid of losing. It's miserable. Thus, most of the time when I, like, communicate, I just get disappointed. Which is my own fault. It's my own fault for expecting others to be like me. No one's experienced the same level of suffering that I've had to, so. Obviously, they're not going to grow as much as I have. And most people don't want to suffer because they don't understand that the only way that they're going to get better is by suffering. So they just kind of block out anything that causes any kind of dissonance. Which again means <laughs> I just have to like pretend. I have to filter almost everything I say. Because, you know, I have to like convert myself to other people's worldviews and like restrain what I'm saying if I want anyone to talk to me. And it's miserable. It's completely miserable. So I, I was learning to like speak to myself. Like wait till I'm in a place where there's people who aren't children. The thing is that there's children of all ages. Obviously, I'm well aware that, like, wanting <laughs> to speak to people is wrong. I'm not wrong, but it's causing me suffering. You know, if I didn't do that, then I'd be fine. It's not, it's not wrong, per se, it's not wrong to suffer. If I consider it subpar, so I'm just trying to find a place where I'm just any bit comfortable. Is there any 
extended period of time. And obviously, like, when I'm just, like, isolated. Regardless if I'm around people or not, just, like, mentally isolated. And always, like, looked at as, like, a weird person. Just because I think differently. It's like, you know what? You know what? No, it's not the case. It's just annoying. You can know things and, like, know other things at the same time. Like, that's the concrete of dissonance right there. The two conflicting beliefs. So I keep switching back and forth to, like, longing to be a human. And then wanting to completely obliterate all of my human. And just evolve into something that doesn't feel pain, doesn't let others get under their skin at all. Doesn't feel lonely. I swear everyone like claims to like <laughs> get there. But they don't. Because they still depend on others. It's hilarious. Because I've had like people like be like, you know, like just like deal with it, but like they've never dealt with it. And I know they wouldn't be able to. But you know, people say they're stupid. Even this is something I want to destroy, you know? The judgment of, like, others. It's horrible. It's like, why? There's nothing I gain from judging other people except suffering in my own head. Like, all judgment I could perform on others is literally only hurting me, unless I, like, speak it out. And if I do speak it out, then I'm hurting both me and others. Which is even worse. And then, like, because I hate judging, when I see other people judge, I get agitated because, you know, it's a part of me that I don't like. If I see that part of me that I don't like in others, and I'm relating negatively to my surroundings, resisting my surroundings. So I kind of have to like learn to be at peace with where everybody is, like not expect a satisfying friendship or anything like that. Just kind of let let everything be the way it is, and try and find the satisfaction just just because things are. What am I going to do? Suffer all my life? Because things aren't the way I want them to be? It's stupid. It's just killing myself. And not in a fun way. I kill myself in way funner ways than that. It's hard living knowing that like all of my suffering is entirely brought on by myself. And at the same time, not at all. And there's this duality of like determinism and free will. Whereas everything is happening inside of me. Like the suffering isn't external ever. That doesn't make any sense. 
So I'm a human that's suffering, thus it's happening within my humanity. And I mean like no one's like stabbing me. I mean so if it got to that point then like I'd understand. But even then, no? Well it's my fault for not being alright with being stabbed. And there's people who like handle being like tortured for like extended periods of time and they're just chilling. So obviously it is always an internal thing. That's like the hardest thing to like, to like swallow. No, the only reason I'm isolated is my own fault. You know, I could put more, way more energy into not being isolated if I wanted to, but I don't. Cause I'm afraid. I'm afraid of people. from like a different lens you know all of this is just the earth doing the earth it's the earth growing and I part of the earth a cell in a bigger body simply dealing with the the dissonant energy flow that has been in motion long before I was conscious of this ego And from that lens, it's like better, because you know, I'm working towards a higher place for all of us, it's not just me. It's kind of extending my sense of self out towards everything that's living on this planet. It's like not knowing how to be alone is like extensively detrimental to like the well-being of the planet. Just not knowing how to fill your own void, not being willing to accept that your own void is, you know, your own void, no one else's void, no one else's fault, no one else's responsibility. That's like horrible because then you go chasing your shadow down in the outside world and you know hurting others because you're hurt. Trying to destroy the parts of yourself that you don't like by projecting it onto others. That's stupid. It's the cause of the majority of all the bad. can't really hate anything that you don't know. If you know it, then, well, guess what? It's in your brain. If you understand it, then it can't be that far outside of you. And oftentimes what we hate, we don't understand, so it's literally just an imagination. Like, literally just a construct of our imagination. get stuck thinking <laughs> concentrate this uh, constru construction of your imagination is like an accurate depiction of reality that's a big problem and you are psychotic and of course everybody is psychotic to some degree except for people who've like totally broken the veil far and few in between hard to do. It's hard to to take back all of the projections that you've made. And, like separate what is from that's not right. But just to separate what is uh it's a hard thing to, to put into words. I was thinking of like being like you know, a separation of what is from your imagination. 
but also the distinction between imagination and what is this arbitrary. Completely arbitrary. They're both part of what is. You know, if you're caught in a delusion, then that is your present experience, and you should probably be paying attention to that. And not trying to repress it or something. You know, pretend it's not there, so you're not gonna grow. And if you don't grow, then you know, you're stuck. If you aren't aware of your shadow, it's gonna sneak up on you. And you're gonna have to deal with it in time where it's really gonna be inconvenient. So yeah, I take those times of peace and use them to grow as much as you can, because or else those times of suffering are really gonna suck. Like, I don't know how bad, bad down you are, but it could very well be the difference between life and death. As it was in my case. Paraphrase a song that I like. You know, the present inside yourself, waiting to be released, comes from the universe. And let it happen as you help our planet to rise. This is all indeed just one big system. The separation is forever arbitrary. It's placed on top of what is. That's probably like super hard to grasp if you never like felt it. And if you haven't felt it, then you're probably not really trying to feel it because it's really not that difficult to get there. The idea that it's difficult to get there is the is a, a blockage. The idea that it's hard to swallow the pain and everything is just the ego resisting, trying to make it not have to change. Like it's the circuitry in your brain not wanting to get rewired. On a physical level, obviously it's like hard to like rewire the circuits, you know. You got like electricity flowing through all these neurons and stuff. And you want them to change, you know, it's gonna be difficult. said it's going to take time. It's not really difficult. All you have to do is, you know, change your direction. And that's it. Now, then everything else is literally going to fall. You're going to slowly spiral so that's wherever it is you want to go. And, of course, like, that entails going the wrong way sometimes. So, like, that's just the way it works. I read this article about how like the brain navigates itself in you know, like a as though it was going around the surface of a torus, which is like a donut. So literally, inside of you is like electricity spiraling around and around. So obviously, you know, with that in mind, you can think about how 
you're gonna fall back into the same spots no matter what you do. There isn't gonna be, you're very unlikely gonna be an instantaneous permanent shift unless something really big happens. And you're already in the state for that to be the catalyst for big changes to your circuitry. So it takes time. But as long as you like have your direction set, you're gonna keep growing towards it. And I think that naturally, you know, the direction is already so it's just peace. Why wouldn't it be? You know, why would the body be wired to self-destruct? I mean, like, no other animals are like that, so why would we be like that? It's pretty stupid to think so. It's clearly just a, just the way that we've grown in, in this current state of society. is bad, folks. Right now I'm trying to like lose like the sense of separation completely. But I keep forgetting to like let go. Like just then, I'd like noticed all of this tension in my shoulders and chest. And all of that adds to the illusion of separation. I don't have that like layer of separation that I don't feel really lonely anymore. Things are just the way they are. Okay, my thoughts get really quiet. I keep spiraling in and out of it. Back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes it goes. Sometimes without me even like noticing anymore. You know, there's like no conscious effort. Whatever that is. Even like the idea of conscious effort just starting to like. It doesn't make total sense to me anymore because, you know, the electricity is just gonna keep moving around and around. So, what am I going to do about that? What can I do? Everything that I do is just the electricity moving around and around. So, so far as there is some sort of me actually intellectually choosing where I go, that is... That has to rest outside of physics that we know of right now. And honestly, just. I don't know, it doesn't make sense where I'm at. It doesn't seem to make sense to anybody else who ever thought about the universe before we even had science. There's like some sort of like actual causation and it has to be above the physical level. Like conscious causation. It can't it can be can't be here. You know, obviously I'm aware. I'm, about, I'm aware. There's no doubt about that. Being aware, like 
different, but... matter because the brain is going to continually create the illusion for you. Not as the ego does. It says, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. That was me. But literally just particles bouncing around. Super funny. At the same time I would tell somebody, go do this. Why aren't you doing this? Right now, there's both existing in my brain. Uh, both paradigms are coexisting, which is good. I think that always there should be the ability to like control what lens you see in reality, because it's extremely important to think about it, like from like the the lower lenses to the more zoomed in lenses. But to be able to do that and zoom out is the most important. Because if you're caught in the one lens and then a one lens starts causing dissonance, it's probably because there's, you know, a duality that needs to be aware of, you know, now to become aware of both sides to to transcend it. Always to to get over the paradox is to accept both sides of it and as contradictory as it may be. And then things become clear. It's kind of like being in superposition. You know, you're not a particle or a wave. You're undefined. Like, no one knows where you are. Your location is undetermined. Probably not gonna die until my shift at this point. This is a good run. Beautiful. Part of me wants to like fight the fact that there's paradoxes still. That's like obviously there's something I'm missing if there is like contradiction. But the only problem is the resistance to contradiction. I mean, like, at the, the most fundamental level of physics, we are stuck in contradiction. And if there is something past that, then obviously you're not going to get there if you are not willing to look at the contradiction. You know, if you just shy away from what's happening, then you're not going to go past it. That was so little damage. Why am I doing so little damage? Thank you. 
need some like damage stuff. Keep getting healing stuff. It's also really important, especially in this level. Sometimes I wonder if, like, when you, like, become, like, super focused, do you, like, actually, like, create, like, a tiny black hole in your brain or something? Because, like, the sensation is of, like, being sucked inside of something and everything else just like, It just feels... It's, it's not no reason that people consider the state to being of a singularity. It feels like you've condensed yourself into the tiniest point possible. And then fallen into a new, like it turns it, the world turns inside out. It is going to be a real, like, test of my, like, Zen. Because, like, for certain, I'm not going to say it, just in case, like, that's going to change the outcome, but it's going to be a difficult ship. It's my third day in a row, working, like, seven, seven hours a day on average. It's painful. I spoke about my video last night. There's, like, this super painful thing where you do the dishes and um, in the dishes, the dishes area, there's like this manhole cover right where you, you stand. So if you have any kind of wide stance, and like, okay, the manhole cover is below the, like, the, the rest of the floor level. So if you have any kind of wide stance, then you are on uneven ground. And yesterday I had to do the dishes for like five hours straight. So, I like, my back at the end was like the worst it's ever been. I was in insane amount of pain, luckily. I healed myself with like some sick keyboard shredding. I feel pretty great now. That is indeed available. by like a stupendous margin because I don't even know what I was supposed to do there. Oh, that sucks. Maybe we'll just cut it off here instead of continually making like super, super long pieces. So I think that'll be easier. I might just like upload more often. That'd be cool. Oh, that's that. Peace. <laughs> 40 minutes. Very short. 